Speaking of court, as you may know, not only am I one of America's 75 most beloved talk show hosts, I am also <laughs> a well-respected TV judge. And from time to time, along with my trusty bailiff, Guillermo, we hear real cases from small claims court with real litigants who've decided to put their legal fates into the soft and capable hands of Judge James. This is the plaintiff, Michelle Jewett. She claims a former boyfriend landlord owes her money and the return of their dog, Shasta. She's suing for $2,315 and the possession of her puppy. This is the defendant, Craig Powers. He maintains that he adopted Shasta and he's not about to roll over. It's the case of all dogs go to arbitration. Raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They're actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims to have their case decided here by Judge James. The litigants are being sworn in your honor. They've been sworn in my honor? Yes, sir. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> oh, you can sit down now. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Thank you, bailiff. Michelle Jewett, you are suing Craig Powers for $2,315. You claim Mr. Powers owes you money for your rental deposit, the utility bill, labor and materials used to repair damaged property, prescription sunglasses, nine pair of LuLaRoe leggings in a mesh bag, and Shasta the dog, and all Shasta's expenses, yes. correct? Mr. Powers, you claim you don't owe any of this money. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Ms. Jewett, let's uh, start with you. Tell us what's going on here. So in March of 2016, I decided I wanted to get a dog. He drove me to get her. I paid for her. You were dating? We ended up starting dating after I moved into the you house. You moved in and then you started dating? Yes. Whose house was it? It was my house. Your house. He was the landlord. How much did you pay for her? I paid $300 for her. To whom? I found her on Craigslist. So it was just through a private breeder. His dog had puppies. Is this correct? Yeah, that's my list, by the way. That's what? I'm Craig. Oh, all right. I see you were attracted to his sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> so you paid $300 for, for Shasta. Shasta. Yes. Fast forward a little bit. We broke up. Things got bad. Uh, it actually got physical between one of the, me and the other girls that were there. Really? In a sexual way? <laughs> <laughs> actually, she was gay, but no. <laughs> um, who broke up with who? Uh, I broke up with her. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I moved out sooner than the 30-day notice that he gave me, and I made an agreement with him to where he would watch Shasta for me until I was able to figure something out and that I would be able to visit her whenever was I wanted. Was this agreement in writing? No. It was not. It was verbal, what but... What was the agreement as you understood it? The agreement was that Shasta would be placed in my care, and my care only. Oh, Permanently. no, no. We were there. We were right there. They are Listening my witnesses. to the conversation. I had him on there speakerphone. Is. No. no. Tell me about these leggings. <laughs> they were just some leggings I had bought in online. In regards to the leggings and various other claims of hers, I have Facebook messages between her and him where she states that she believed that the other roommate stole her leggings. But he's still the landlord, and you really shouldn't have to talk about this. You're not involved. If you actually refer to California tenant landlord law... Please don't lecture me on the law. No one knows more about the law than I do. And you're not even involved in this. You have nothing to, to do with this. And what is your relationship to the defendant? This is my boyfriend. Boyfriend, how long have you been dating? Uh, about seven months. She, she was on was the phone. She around. She doesn't even know anything about this. You know she what, actually, even... I'd like the plaintiff and defendant to reenact this uh, exchange. <laughs> and now Judge James presents courtroom theatrics. Okay, go ahead. And action. No, she is not our dog. She is my dog. You've said it yourself many times, even in this conversation. We got her together. I've raised her. Oh, well, I paid for her. I paid for everything. She is mine. More passion, more passion. Personal care. <laughs> I took care of everything. She's ours. I don't know why you got to be like this. I'm taking her back. End of story. You said I can get her whenever, and now you're trying to hold her hostage. What kind of <laughs> is that? <laughs> Great job. OK. Do you live in a place that allows dogs now? I do not right now. Um, so you're just asking for money, not the dog? 
I We've would, asked for both. I've asked for both. I've tried everything I could to get her back. Everyone that I've talked to pretty All much told me that I would not see her, that it was up to him. Well, I don't know who these law people are, but there's only one law person in this courtroom, and his name <laughs> is Judge James. Thank you. That's right, Judge James. I'll be back with my verdict. Will Judge James rule in favor of the defendant or the plaintiff? Or are they both barking up the wrong tree? Judge James' verdict when we return. Attention dogs. Have you been denied treats, toys, walks, couch access, and belly rubs? You may be entitled to a large cash settlement. Put down that bone and pick up the phone. Call the law offices of Weinstein and O'Brienstein. We're very good boys with over 224 dog years experience of suing owners. Stop dragging your rear end. Call Weinstein and O'Brienstein. We play rough. This depressed plaintiff claims the defendant is a dirty dog. This defendant calls it a bogus suit. And this dog just wants a rough over its head. Judge James is about to rule. Let's listen. This is a complicated case, I know, and emotions, I'm sure, are going to run high. Bottom line is this, Michelle, you aren't even allowed to have a dog where you live. I know. Yeah, and you've lived in a couple different places where you weren't allowed to have a dog. Yes. Yes, yes. So how much of the $2,315 was related to Shasta? Almost all of it. Do you have the sunglasses? I returned the sunglasses back to her at the court mediation. He did. He did. Well, $300 of it was for sunglasses you got back. Yeah, so $360 $300... was for leggings, which um, Treg is not responsible for. I'm going to award the uh, cost of Shasta the dog, plus $200 for Shasta's expenses, and $325 for the rental deposit to the plaintiff. And uh, the defendant, you get to keep Shasta. But that's not fair because he's been such a thief. I have made my ruling and it will not be challenged further. <laughs> On the next Judge James. Now what's wrong here? It's trimmed too low. Megan Good has a little bit more hair in the back. I explained to her in the beginning there was no way she could look like Megan Good. There's no, no way that you no. can do There's hair no like, like Megan can do hair. So you just wanted to look like Megan Good and you feel like it came out Megan bad. That's the point. You don't know how to do hair. Exactly. Straight up. Wow, I can't. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings.